God says, I got a time. I, whatever happens, I don't get off my calendar. He said, I don't care if you understand my calendar or not. I'm not getting off of it because I said it for a purpose. And he said, I need you to tarry here just for a little while because the time is coming. And did the time come? It came. And the Lord said, look, 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 go to John 14. Go to John 14. Because we know what happened. In Acts chapter 2, what was the big event? The Holy Spirit was given by the Father to his disciples. Amen? Amen. And what did they do? Everybody got excited. Why? Because they heard the message in their own language. You ever stop to consider why everybody was there in the first place? See, the word Pentecost hadn't existed yet. But Pentecost means what? 50. But all of them were there because it was the season and the time that they had been doing for thousands of years. God's still on the same calendar. Isn't that beautiful about God? He doesn't change. And so they were all there, and the miracle was they heard everything in their own language. The disciples finally understood the purpose to glorify God. And so all they spoke were things that glorify God, and they spoke in the language. It wasn't just great, oh, because anybody can get, well, any, you know, it, we've been in places where people speak some strange things, but they weren't glorifying God. They finally got it. The Holy Ghost came, and they finally got it. They understood that their purpose was to glorify God in all that they do. John chapter 14. So we'll understand what happened. Let's go to verse 16. John 14, 16. We're going to try not to keep you very long. We know you are tired. You've been on the road all day. And we thank God that you made it. Hallelujah. John 14, verse 16. It says, And I pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you. How long? Forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. Now look at this. The world can't see him or know him, they're not familiar with the purpose of God. Without the purpose, you can't see it either. I don't care what happens. You're not going to be able to see it if you don't know why God is giving it. And so he had to wait for the time to give when the brothers could be ready. And the sisters too now. We're sisters up there. We don't want to sound like we don't include them. But God says, look, I, I, I need you to understand that the world can't deal with this. And as long as we are in the world, or no, as long as we are of the world, what is our testimony going to be? We won't be able to see it either. You might get a, a, a glimpse. You might get an inkling. But as long as we stuck in the world, and we talk about world, we know what you're, we're talking about. We're not talking about planet Earth. We're talking about the ways of the world. And when we're in the ways of the world, we can't, for, get, can't fulfill the purpose. Amen? Let's keep reading. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall, what? Isn't that a great promise? Amen. See, when Amen. Jesus speaks, Amen. it's so. Amen. It didn't happen right then. But he knew, he looked down the line, oh, the comfort is going to be in you. That's what he told us for this weekend. It's going to be in us. Amen. Okay? And it won't because we're righteous. It's, it's not because we got it right. He said it's time that it might dwell in you. Amen. Make sure you know the purpose. So when I give you this power, you'll know the purpose. He said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall do what? Teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. Now, let's look at the purpose here. Let's look at the purpose that's uh, defined by the scripture. First of all, the Holy Ghost is going to what? Teach. It knows its purpose, so it's going to teach. And what else it's going to do? It's going to remind you of the word, of the things that you have put in. It's going to bring that to your remembrance at the proper time. Now, go back to Acts, and we're going to see the real purpose of this. The Holy Ghost said, it knows its purpose. It will teach, and it will remind. Mm. Amen? Mm. You know, everything associated with heaven understands its purpose. Mm. Yeah. Everything on earth understands its purpose except man. You don't see a bee trying to be a bear, do you? No. It knows its purpose. Mm. We are the only ones that are lost. Won't be lost for long, though. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1. We're back in Acts. What, let's, run. let's read verse 8. Acts chapter 1, Hallelujah. verse 8. 
Look at this promise. But ye shall what? Receive power. Receive power. He didn't say you might. You shall receive power. After what? After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Isn't that a blessing? Now you know it's not you. Now whatever happens, you know it's not you. It's because the Holy Ghost has been placed in you. Now that is the power and not you. It should make you relax. You don't have to worry about it. You just have to make sure you're plugged in. Amen? He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both where? In Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto what? Memphis, Atlanta, Pineville, Alexandria. That's some uttermost right there. He said, I'm going to send you places you not have, you have not heard of, but I'm sending power in you. He didn't say I'm sending power with you. He said I'm sending power in you. And so when we go to the uttermost part, what's going to be with us? The Holy Spirit. And for what purpose? That you may be my witness. Isn't that good? So what is your job description? Glorify witness. That's it. That's it. Holy Ghost has a job. You have a job. I have a job. Glorify the Father which is in heaven. Witness of the goodness of Christ. That's it. You can't do it if you don't have the Holy Spirit. You won't have the Holy Spirit unless you understand the purpose why the Holy Spirit is given to you. Your Holy Spirit is not for you to walk down the hospital halls and just touch folks. Get up, get up. Go to the mortuary and say, get up. That's not the purpose. Well, you might, you might have to do that, though. That's okay with you, right? Amen. If it glorifies the Father. Amen. Why was Lazarus raised? Glorify the Father. Amen. Not to show out. Not to prove to anybody I can do something. It was, God said, hey, that's going to glorify me. That's right. He said, Father, I, I know you hear me. And it's for them, because I know. And he said, get up, Lazarus. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. Didn't he get you up? Amen. From all of our, our little addictions and all of our little issues that we were dead in sin, but didn't he come by and get you up? Amen. For what purpose? To glorify his Father. That's, right. That's what's so wonderful about Amen. Jesus. If we would just follow Jesus. We just follow what he did. He always glorified his father. And you know how he glorified him? He obeyed him. He said, not my will, but thy will. Why? He understood his purpose. And he understood the purpose of the relationship. See, don't misuse the relationship with Jesus. And remember, God is not a vending machine. I can't, well, God, I need this today. Give it to me. That's not how this thing works. Father, help me to glorify you. Help me to spread light in this dark world. Point me where you want to be. What do you want me to do? And be open to it. And the first thing he's going to tell you is your home. Mm. Get your home straight. He said, before you leave and try to be my witness, obey me in your home. Mm. Brothers and sisters, get the house in order. Husbands, get your house in order. Wives, understand order. Then the children might be saved. Amen. Hmm. Amen. 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 That's where we have to start. And then guess what will happen? You'll be able to walk in the church, and the church will be in order. Amen. We won't have discussions about foolish things. We won't have the issues about, I want to be this, and I want to be that. Why? Because it's already been gotten straight. Amen. Go to, if you would, let's, 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 let's go to First Chronicles. First Chronicles. This is how we glorify God, as we walk in his way. What did Jesus do? He walked in his way. He glorified him in everything he did. Everything he did was to the glory of his Father. He's our example, amen? amen. So what should we be? We should glorify him by walking in the way. Now we understand why he's going to give us this power. Don't abuse this power. We've seen this power do some miraculous things. He can't give a power to someone he can't trust to obey him. That's right. That's right. That's right. Gives you power over, uh, to, uh, to make the, the sick well, and you out here trying to make money with it. 
if he gives you the power. He might even say, I need that person. He did it once before. He, a, a, a sister died in the church, a sister, a wonderful sister. And they said, no, we can't lose her. Guess who had the power? The obedient one. He said, oh, <laughs> okay, get up. Why? Because the power could be trusted in him. Because he had already given up all to him. And don't you think he checked? He didn't walk in there and the, thus saith Peter. <laughs> Peter had been there before. Peter went, he'd been there before one night when they kept asking him, did he know him? He could trust Peter. And Peter knew, Father, for your glory. You know, one day you're going to have to do that. And I want you to remember 1 Chronicles. If you would go to verse, I mean, chapter 16. This is your purpose. This is our purpose as a people. Don't ever forget this. In everything, everything, glorify God. Verse 24, we're going to read verse 24, then we're going to read 28 and 29. First Chronicles chapter 16. Verse 24. What is your purpose? Declare his glory among who? The heathen. His marvelous works among all nations. Verse 28, give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of what? Holiness. Holiness. You want to glorify God? Start living a life that lines up with your purpose. That lines up with his purpose with you. He called it holiness. He said, I need you to worship me in the beauty of holiness. We got to really come to the understanding that holiness is beautiful. That's right. That's right. Holy is not a burden. Mm. It's not something that we bear because, well, they're going to talk about me, so I guess I got to wear this, or I got to look like this, or I got to eat. Look, people, holiness is beautiful, and it only comes from God. Amen. The only holiness that we need is from Jesus. When the Holy Spirit comes in us, we will become holiness. We will, be, we will walk in the way of the holy God. And that's when you say, wow, okay, is that easy? Uh, you mean, is, we've, been, we've been kicking and writing books and doctrines, and we've been measuring folks, and we've been doing all this, and it's just that easy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always been that easy. The devil has got you confused. That's right. Amen. That's right. And watch what he does. He will put us in a place that we have never been in. We will move closer and closer to him, and all of a sudden, things will start saying, wow, this makes sense. Lord, it's really, this is how you want us to live. He said, it's so easy. Follow me. Where in the Bible was it difficult? He would get, meet with them. He would give them. They would say, yay. They would go away. Over and over again. He said, I didn't change the rule. It's so simple. If you be willing and obedient, what will happen? You'll eat the good of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. That's just it. Why are we making it more complicated? Your purpose tonight and from now on is all that you do is to glorify God. Amen. That's your purpose of being married. Amen. Amen. Having children. Oh, you thought those were your children. Children are the heritage of the Lord. Amen. The fruit of the womb is his what? His reward. Having children, have it glorifying God. Being married, be married glorifying God. Amen. Amen. If you married any other way, you have missed the purpose. Some young people get married for some strange reasons. I often hear, well, I married her, she makes me feel good. And then next week, when she doesn't, guess who gets a call? Pastor Shaw, man, they tripping. <clears throat> That's crazy. Or the sisters, well, you know my husband. That's because you didn't marry to glorify God. You know, all your business all over the street. Does that glorify God? No, your marriage is not of God. 
It's not glorifying God. So your purpose needs to be what? Altered just a little bit. I'm not just talking about young people. Believe me. There are people who married 30 years, still not glorifying God. There are people coming to church 30 years, still not glorifying God. But not anymore for us, right? Amen. Our purpose is to glorify him. Amen. It's such a wonderful God that we can be actually attached to something so holy and being such an unholy people, such a dust feel nothing. What David asked, he said, I don't even know why you're mindful of us. Mm. But thank God he is. Amen. So our purpose is, is simple, it's true, and can be accomplished by the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. So as we listen this weekend, keep in mind the purpose. Amen? If you came here to get a sensation, you might get one, but that's not your purpose. When you came here, I feel so, you know, last time y'all were in Memphis, there were some people who got healed, but that wasn't a purpose. There were some demons cast out, but that wasn't a purpose. The purpose was to what? Glorify God. And some of you left here with that in your heart. Let me tell you what happened in Atlanta. Those who, who were in Atlanta, most of you were, because most of you are from Atlanta. <laughs> we left there changed. Amen. I don't know, for you all who stayed there, I'm sure you were too. But we left there changed. Why? Because it was time to glorify God Amen. in all that we do. There's some things that changed in my life that I was not aware or all conscious of. I just looked up and said, you know I hadn't watched a television show? Man, it's been a while. <laughs> that, that was not a fault. I didn't go home from Atlanta saying, I'm not watching television any longer. <laughs> it just happened. Because I said, it's time to change. Now you're not, you know, I'm not, you watch television, beautiful. I mean, I didn't say, I, t I didn't throw my televisions out. But it was, God says, I'm taking you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I'm taking you to another level. I'm taking you to another place. And it's time for you to go there. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time coming. I was so happy to get that call. He said, it's time for you now to go. Because you, if you're down here in the muck and the mire, and then finally the boss calls and said, it's time for you to come on up, you. oh, you're just happy. <laughs> you don't even know where up is. You just know it's out of this. And all of a sudden, things start to change. And things got harder. Amen. They got higher. And you know what? It was OK. Because God said, you're up here with me now. That's right, that's right. So don't worry about it. Now, we all going to go to another level this weekend Amen. if we understand the purpose and stay within the purpose. What is the purpose? To glorify God. To glorify God. Is that the purpose today? Yes, sir. Was it the purpose of Sinai? Because yes, remember, he got, he said, look, I need you to come out here so you can be separate so that the heathen will know who I am. That's right. it, does a heathen know who he is through you? Or does a heathen know you? <coughs> but it's going to be all right. Because he said, it will or it shall be in you. And I know that because he, uh, he what is that? Not Ecclesiastes, Ezekiel. 33 says, I'll put my spirit in you, and then you'll do all the things I ask you to do. So we're going to receive the spirit. And to the degree you understand the purpose is the degree you'll receive the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? So what we're going to do tonight when we go home, or our hotel rooms, we're going to say, Lord, put me in the purpose. That's right. That's right. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to miss out coming all the way down here and let everybody else get filled with the Holy Spirit, and I go home mad. We're not going to have that, are we? Amen? Amen. Amen. We good? Amen. All right, we're going to uh, 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 close with a word of prayer. And we would like to have uh, Pastor Sharp and Pastor Smith lead us in a brief prayer um, so we can, we can get in the position of the purpose. So let's have a brief prayer and then uh, Pastor Sharp and Pastor Smith that we would lead us in a word of prayer. Sam, we'll pray first. <clears throat> our Father and our God, you were the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 
We read you were the God of Israel. You were the God at Mount Sinai. You were the God at Pentecost. And now you're the God here. Oh, thank you for your presence. Thank you for the understanding you give us. Thank you, Lord, for understanding the purpose of our relationship with you is to glorify your name. Father, thank you. We can't say thank you enough. We are here now with thanksgiving in our soul. Father, we are gathered here today thanking you for the opportunity, for the purpose. And Father, help us. We are but dust. But Lord, you're a great God. And you promised you'd put this spirit in us. Lord, we're not waiting till we get worthy. Father, thank you. Thank you for not waiting. Thank you for understanding we are always a work in progress. But Lord, you said you would refine us if we would let you. Father, we open up our hearts tonight because we want you to. We want you to put us through the fire. Whatever it is, Lord, we trust you. We trust your process, Lord, because you are a loving God, a saving God, a glorious God. Help us, Lord. Help us to cling to you. Hold your hand. Not be swayed by the devil's temptations. Father, his lies, his deceit. Father, we've lived in them long enough. We don't believe his lie anymore. We believe your truth. Help us to hold on to it. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.